I'm standing at the corner of Clarkson, Varick, and Carmine, and there's basically no traffic. There's one car waiting at the light over here, and that's about it. Hi, I'm Doug Gordon. It's hard to believe, but about a year and a half ago, Clarence and I stood at this intersection, and it was just a sea of traffic, a total traffic sewer. And today, uh, because so much is shut down, we're barely seeing any cars go through, just a handful each light cycle. Uh, it was a mess, and crossing the street was really difficult, especially if you were carrying kids, if you were pushing a stroller, if you were in a wheelchair. Even the traffic agents had a really hard time keeping drivers from blocking the intersection. We're actually living through a very real life before and after picture, like it's come to life. The before is all of the traffic that would just gridlock every intersection, all the fumes, all the honking, all the noise, all the stress of just trying to cross the street. Someone just leaning on their horn, and that's what we all have to deal with here in our offices, people who live in the apartments over here. The after is this. You can hear birds chirping. It's actually pleasant over here, which is not something you would usually use to describe this particular intersection. And it's not really the after that we want because so much of the city is dead. The life has been really sucked out of the city. But we can choose the next after that we want for our city. And that's going to be based on smart policies that make it difficult to drive if you don't absolutely have to. If we don't want all the cars to come back, what do we need? We need congestion pricing, that's got to happen. Normally that bus would be so slow, it would be so stuck in traffic that I could run, go get coffee and come back and it probably wouldn't have even left the stop. So going forward, it needs a bus lane. There are lots of people who understandably are going to be afraid of taking transit. And actually there'll be people who are afraid of getting on a bike, it's not always easy. But we need to prepare because even just a small fraction of people decide to get in a car, this intersection, and in really the whole city, is going to look just the way that it did before. And we know that that wasn't working for anybody then. It's really not going to work for anybody going forward. The message we need to send is that you have to act now, because if we wait for things to reopen, it'll be too late.